Intel's like not a young company. It's not a startup. No. 75 years old? Mattel has seen generations of play, right? Mm. And you have had to come in and look at where does technology belong in that play experience. And you've had a couple of iterations of that thought pattern. So do you want to just talk a little about how that whole, how you've evolved as a company to think about play? Yeah, I, I think um, I'll talk a little bit about how I evolved as well. I've been at Mattel now um, about a year and a half, so fairly new. My background is, um, you know, executive um, technology leadership roles in other Fortune 500 companies and product side and on uh, the IT and technology side. And so uh, when I got, a, got the call to come to Mattel, uh, being a big kid and having a bunch of these kind of tech toys uh, that I loved, um, I was like, of course, why, you know, who gets, who gets to an offer to come play as, uh, for a living? So I, uh, I decided to go to Mattel, and I, I went in with, the, I think, the mindset of, you know, of course you can take technology, put it in a toy, and make it fun. I mean, uh, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but what I learned, and, and I think Mattel has this amazing history of uh, design thinking before design thinking was, was even something we put together, right? It's this history of play testing and play labs and, and studying uh, how kids like to interact with products, and they really understand toys. And what I learned is, you know, putting technology in, in a plastic housing uh, and calling it a toy does not make it a toy, right? Um, toys are really things that are, you know, that parents are making bets on. They've got to be lower cost uh, experiences because you know parents aren't going to make a bet on a five hundred dollar toy. They're going to make bets on number of smaller smaller aspects. They got to be play patterns that kids get for the right ages and stages that they're in, um, and they have to be relevant to the brand that they're being built for. And I think that was a big learning for me as well. It's like um, you know what what kids want out of a Barbie experience is completely different than what kids want from a Hot Wheels experience. And so uh, so I think that the, the the thing that we've been we've been really working on is taking. Cons the consumer experience, coupling it with the brand experience, and then um, driving innovation around that to create really, really interesting new ways to use tech. And tech has to be a lighter touch uh, experience in toys. It can't just be this heavy tech for take tech sake experience. Right. So let's talk about some of the historically. Some, I mean, the talent was out there with talking Barbie, mm -hmm. with holographic Barbie, and they were expensive, right? Mm -hmm. They were f fairly pricey, and so. What you've learned through that is to think about tech differently in your design. Yep. So, and tech is expensive to create, mm -hmm. and, and we know that. And I think in our prep calls, you and I talked about this idea of building, building blocks to build tech toys rather than building a tech toy. So why don't you talk about the building process that you are yeah, I, I think there's a couple things that we're doing that's a little bit different. We, we have, we've been very innovative and created some amazing things and done some things that are, are really, really, we're spot on for the time. Um, but I think that there's been a bit of a shift in, in the landscape, right? I mean, um, tablets and, and mobile devices have, have become platforms that we can create on now, which is uh, a little different than when, you know, the, every, all of the technology had to be encompassed within, within the toy itself. Um, and also there's a, a different platform mindset in technology itself. I mean, uh, we've been working on, one, one of the things that we did when I came in is we had a number of acquisitions that we'd made of technology uh, companies in, in the kids' space. And um, they were innovating within their space and innovating around products. Um, but what, what I realized is that being able to pivot them to innovate within the brands would be a much, much more a valuable thing to do, and so. What's an example of? So an example. Um, it, 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 I mean, we're working right now in the Hot Wheels space with some really cool products that we're going to come out with later this year, um, where we've taken that kind of DNA of of play and creativity, coupled it with a digital product management mindset, and then taken these innovators and technologists and and tied them to that group, and we've put them together and go, we're going to create a platform uh, in this space that allows us to grow not just single products, but grow experiences across the brand. And the things that they're coming out with are just amazing. It's, it's amazing innovation that's going to come out later this year. Right. Well, and you've already looked at, let's talk about voice technology. I mean, you've already looked at voice. Do you see it as important? And how are you going to think about that in your playing? I mean, part of the way that I think about um, just, you know, as you walk CES, 
Um, and you see these different experiences. I mean, obviously, um, voice-based AI and digital assistants are huge. But part of the way that I think about it is, is a little bit of, of um, we want to meet our consumers where they want to be and where they land. And so um, I think voice is an interesting uh, interaction in play, but there's also this aspect of voice as a platform in the home that becomes more and more um, kind of ubiquitous, kind of like mm -hmm. the tablet has. I mean, we, we see now that 90% of kids have a, a tablet that they use regularly or a mobile device that they use regularly. And as these other experiences and these other technologies evolve, I think that they will naturally become platforms in, in play experiences. But I think it's, um, I think it's probably more because we're focused on the toy space and we're, because we're focused on fun at a cost-effective price point, I think you have to ride the waves in a little bit of a different fashion than when you're creating a personal electronic good. Yeah. I mean, I think you not only had price uh, that the parents objected to, but complexity. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, is it going to be compatible with my other things? What's going to happen to my children's privacy? I mean, I think you faced a yeah. lot of yeah. issues in going full on, but you also have learned things about what kids love in the tech world that are kind of surprising. I mean, leaderboards, right? Mm -hmm. uh, talk about some of like the, the trends you're seeing in kids that are maybe not so tech intensive, but um, physical yeah. digital. Yeah, well, I mean, I think th there's a fundamental lesson that I think we've learned as we do we do play testing and, and, and kind of design thinking with, with families. I mean, the first thing is that, um, you know, the, duh, parents are concerned about the amount of time kids spend on screens. But the more interesting thing is that kids are concerned about the time that parents spend on screens, right? And for those of you doing emails, you probably didn't hear that, but basically your kids are sitting there looking at you going, I wish my parents weren't on their device as much. I wish they were interacting with me. And so part of, I think, that what we have to do as a, as a toy company is, number one, we have to promote the continuation of physical play. Uh, we know that it, it develops kids cognitively, physically, emotionally. We have to promote that. And I think part of digitally enhanced experiences is that, that still physical has to be at, at the core. But the other is that we have to bring the unit together in a way that, that they can have fun together because kids desperately want uh, time with their parents. And then when you look across our brands, if you look at brands like American Girl or Barbie, um, you know, those are, those are great experiences where also sometimes um, you, your in, initial instinct is to lean into tech, where actually the experience is maybe less tech. And we did something with Barbie this last year that was, was kind of a, a, a nice experiment that really turned out to be valuable in that we, we rolled out a robotics engineer Barbie. Uh, Non-connected, no tech, plastic, uh, experience, um, but we coupled it with a partnership with Tinker where kids could, if they were interested, go on to a digital experience and learn how to program. Uh, and in December, we, we, um, we ended the year with over a million kids going through the program. And that, that is a great experience where we can inspire kids through our brand and inspire kids through, inspire kids through play patterns that they love, but give them that step. So if they're interested in Barbie, maybe they'll learn to program. If they're interested yeah. in, you know, the robotics engineer, or if they just are interested in learning to program. Yeah, right? and I think extending your brand, you know, if they're interested in horses, if they're interested yeah, in theater, there are yeah. different manifestations mm -hmm. yeah of that, 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 that you've gotten quite good at. Mm -hmm. And you call this mixed play. Yep. And when we first started talking, I said, is he talking about AR and VR? Because I'm like a nerd. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> Me too. Um, so tell, define mixed play, because yeah. I, think, I think it's a super important concept. Yeah. What we're really leaning into is mixed play as um, you know, physical at its core. And so keeping physical play really core to the experience, um, enhancing it with digital in a way um, that keeps kids engaged, because these kids were born after the tablets were, were invented, right? They're, they're born, um, you know, we like to, to say they learn how to swipe before they learn how to wipe. And so they are, they are engaged in, in these digital experiences, but figuring out the right level of digital enhancement, and it doesn't mean that we don't do digital products, and it doesn't mean that we don't do pure physical products, but the goal is that, as, uh, that, that we give the kids the breadth of, of the experiences that they wanna, want to play in, and when those come together, the tide raises all boats. So, so are, but are kids so programmed that they'll take a Barbie and just say, where's the on button? Um, is, are, yeah, we, no. are we there? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I do think, you know, you see a lot of stories about kids taking books and trying to, 
um, to pinch zoom and, and things like that. And I, I think actually kids love to still play phys physically, right? And I think, yeah, if you give them a tablet and give them and, and put them in the room and say, do what you will, they probably will fully engage. But kids really like to play physically still. They like to tell stories with their dolls. They like to, you know, have accessories on the floor. They like to make things up. Uh, and I think that digital could take that away from them by going, hey, no, you don't get to imagine anymore. You just get to interact with this. And by the way, here's the instruction book because now toys have to come with instruction books. No, it's a toy. It's supposed to drive imagination and inspire, right? And so if we can figure out the right level and layer of digital enhancement, it still then is, an, is, a, is a, something that creates inspiration versus a boxed-in experience. So next month in New York, mm -hmm. Toy Fair, it's right around the corner, yep. and Mattel often um, showcases some of its best mm -hmm. products for the year there. Can you give us a little teasing hint about what we might see there and how it fits in to the strategy? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, between, between Toy Fair and kind of the summer this next year, there's, you're going to see a lot of new things that come out of, of Mattel that I think really line out with our strategy. A lot of really cool things. I mean, at Toy Fair this year, um, you know, you're going to see, um, I think, something that, that really does kind of define all the principles I, I, I mentioned. I'm not going to I'm not going to give it up too much, but it's it's a it's a new pic Pictionary experience that I think uh, will check the boxes of you know a, a low cost experience with a digital enhancement and something that brings the family unit together in a really really fun way. Love it, low cost. So you heard it, a new Pictionary experience, families, low cost. I think. Um, we, we are seeing a price sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's worldwide or not. I do hear that in Brazil, in Japan, in India, families are more willing uh, to go spend two, $300 mm -hmm. on, a, on a robot toy uh, or on a learning or on a Lego Mindstorms. Mm -hmm. Do you see that international patterns changing? I, I do think that, that families are willing to spend, but it's... it's um, it's not all, I mean, it's not, you know, kind of robustly accessible, right? And so I do think that there's always a place for, for, for higher tech experiences. And I think when we look at some of the products that we launch, we, we are looking at doing a breadth and a range so that we have a real entry level into that product and a, and a broader and a kind of a higher price point that, that's kind of more, um, more exciting. But I think that the, the point is toys should be accessible. Should yeah. be accessible to everybody. And whether they're willing to pay or not, if they can't, yeah. Like that's what I loved about Barbie, right? Y it wasn't it wasn't something that only rich people could get. Anybody that could afford a Barbie could get into the experience and learn how to program. Right, or just take her head off. Um, and and but, cut her hair, yes. But a actually, what I think we're going to see is more public play spaces where you can have more. I'm going to say expensive VR yes. um, immersive experiences with brands that you couldn't afford to have at home. And so I'm excited. I know Mattel's done play days in the community, and I know you've been out there, and um, I know that kids love it. So I hope you, you'll yes. continue. I, I think I, you're absolutely right. I think that there's a, there's a, a grassroots movement around um, you know, kind of these, these toy libraries out there all over the world right now. Um, there's experiences popping up in malls, and you know, we, we actually uh, do have a sizable retail presence with our American Girl, and we're constantly focused on how to make those more experiential and, and more engaging to, to kids. So I absolutely agree with you. So were you a Hot Wheels guy when you were a kid? Uh, yes, and, and I am often accused of being uh, partial to the brand, but I love Barbie too, and American Girl. So uh, I am still a Hot Wheels kid, by the way, Robin. So. Uh, I just always felt them under my feet. <laughs> I would take, go walk and then and, and run. They're much, much better to play with than to walk on, trust me. So um, I think, without putting you on the spot about all sorts of other Mattel issues, I think we have covered a lot of ground. I love this idea of mixed play. I think it is a, a time where parents are price sensitive and want to grow with the brand and that Step, mm -hmm. Stepping up is, um, yeah. through the levels is a really important concept. And I think that's why tech as a platform experience versus a product-centric experience is critical. Anybody have a question before I let Sven go? What are your thoughts on artificial intelligence and how are you incorporating that into your products? 
Um, you know, I, artificial intelligence is a big buzzword. It's one of those things that I think everybody, everybody can spell and not many people can really articulate exactly what it is because it kind of drives a lot of everything that's, that's being done out there. I mean, when it comes to, you know, artificial intelligence in, um, in a kind of a verbal interaction like an Alexa or a Google, uh, I think that they are the right players in that space uh, and that are, that are growing it. And we are doing some things. We've done some things in the past to integrate as well. We did escape room in a box that had an, an Alexa type integration. And so I think you'll, you'll escape see room us. In, escape room in a box. Yeah, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, yeah and so you'll, you'll, you'll see some of that. But I do think, um, you know, I, I, I mean, AI is, is continuing, continuing to grow. And I think the, the thing about toys is that we've got to find the right time for the right technology. So I would rather um, see us spend more time, honestly, in just making physical, engaging in a play pattern that kids understand today and that they get today, uh, versus trying to teach them new play patterns around new tech that's kind of on the, on the precipice of being you know, figured out. Sound so old school, but yes. I, I, so yeah. I actually, coming in, I was kind of a nerd. Now I feel like the Luddite CTO. Uh, but I think it's the right, the right approach right. For, for this space. And I think the one, uh, you're the CTO for not just toy design, but all of Mattel. Yes. So you have to move an entire organization mm -hmm. into yeah. all sorts of worlds, from mm -hmm. physical access to yeah. the building to... Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're working on transforming our, whether it's our IT technology, our go-to-market, our, our you know, direct-to-consumer selling experiences, our retail experiences. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of really cool things and we've got a really good leadership team that's very supportive in transforming technology, Mattel, so it's the uh, most fun I've ever had. There you go. Thank you so much for Thank doing you, Robin. this. Thank you, Really appreciate it. Stan, appreciate it.